Luton Town 1, Manchester United 2. And I should be smiling because it is a big three points. But I'll tell you what, every player bar Kobe Mainu and Rasmus Hoyland and actually Johnny Evans when he came on, maybe put Varane into that, was absolutely awful. The game management today for Manchester United was absolutely shocking. And normally I like to start with the positives and focus on the positives. And I'll get to the positives, but I'm not going to lie. I'm so annoyed with the way that game played out. And I need to calm down. This is obviously instant straight to after the game. We have won the game and it is three points. And that is the main thing. That's the most important thing. And it cuts that gap down to three. But I'm going to get, I'm actually going to get my frustrations out before I take it down a little bit and look at the bigger picture. To be 2-0 up in a game like that, cruising, right? And to have that lack of care on the ball, that type of decision-making from senior professionals, to be outshone by Kobe Mainu was absolutely awful. Kobe Mainu must be looking around that Man United team and being like, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I am head and shoulders above this. I am level above Bruno. I am levels above Casemiro by the way these guys are playing. Not in what he's achieved in his, in his short, short career, by the way, in his 11th like start, I think it is. Like, it's absolutely... I, do, I don't get what we were doing. There was times, even right... You know, I'm going to start with Bruno. I'm going to start and I'm going to go through. Bruno, like some of the decision-making he, he had today was absolutely like, awful. I don't know what he was thinking half the time. Like, I honestly don't know what he was thinking half the time. And I'm like, why? What, like, what, what, is he, what is he thinking? Even right towards the end, right? We had the chance to keep the ball in the corner. It hasn't gone to plan, but we're winning, right? We're winning. And what does he do? Just keep the, like, just, just kick, kicks the ball straight, straight back to them. When he should have just kept it in a corner. And that led to Luton Town having another corner, by the way and another chance at goal. And another thing that really annoyed me is let's not act like Manchester United couldn't have won that game today, 5-1. The amount of chances and lack of being clinical today from Marcus Rashford, from Alejandro Ganacho clean through, from Bruno constantly giving it away, Hoyland missed a couple. Like the decision-making from us at times was absolutely atrocious. Casemiro walking a tightrope. Don't get me wrong, the first foul, you're thinking, I'll tell you what, uh, is it probably just about, but he always goes into the book. This is an experienced player. Then the second one, he, on Morris, he should be sent off. Casemiro should have got sent off. And then he's walking a tightrope. I don't blame Eric Ten Hag for changing it at halftime. I don't, I don't blame him at all. At all. I don't, I don't blame him. Because he, he was a walking red card Casemiro today. And he's supposed... Kobe's supposed to look to his left and say, you know what? You're going to get me through this game. You've won five Champions Leagues, I think it is, or four, whatever it is. You're going to carry me through this game in this tough away game when we've conceded straight after scoring again and, 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 and the chips are a little bit down. Instead, you've got Casemiro walking around like a lunatic, nearly getting sent off. And you know what? Scott McTominay did all right when he came on. So did Johnny Evans. Harry Maguire. That was like the old Harry Maguire. That was like the old Harry Maguire. Constantly fouling Morris, getting dragged out of position. That free kick he had where he just passed it straight to, I think it was Lekonga. Like, what did he see? What did he see? And I tell you what, Johnny Evans, he deserves a new contract. With the way he's playing, he's come in, won his headers, good defending. At one point, he was leading the flipping press. So, look... I had massive frustrations with the way that we could like, and this is another thing. People will cuss Ten Hag for that and say, oh, this proves he's clueless and he's tactically inept and this, that and the other. I'm sorry. We're two nil up cruising and the players just decide they ain't got a fucking brain cell. And then on top of that, it still opens up for us where we just need to be clinical. We're creating enough chances to win by far. What do you want to do if Ganacho's clean through and tries to run around the keeper, then stop, then cut back in, then get his shot blocked? What do you want to do if Bruno can make it 3-1 near the end and shoots wide when he shouldn't? What do you want to do when Marcus Rashford's clean through and then chooses the wrong option? What do you want to do if Hoyland misses? There were so many chances. So many chances. And I think that's the frustrating thing. And then as for Luke Shaw, I mean, 
I said it. I, I just, I just don't know if he's right. Like, I hope I'm glad he's starting. And I thought, right, it took him off a half time against Villa, and he's had the whole week to recover. And the fact that he's travelled, you're thinking it shouldn't really be a gamble. And he's injured again. Typical. And then you have to bring on uh, Lindelof uh, at left back again, which is obviously a big problem. There's a couple of chance, a uh, um, couple of times he was in trouble. Other times he did okay. But I just think our game management was really poor. And Arno actually had a good game as well, actually, to be fair to him. Didn't have loads of saves to make because of the lack of quality from Luton's finishing. Um, but his distribution was good and he set up some good chances. Dallo was another one. He had the ball clean through. Like, I just I just don't get it. I just It's the decisions of the players that are actually, I'm not going to say costing us because we've won the game, but they're the ones that are making us feel like this. Tactically, like, we've started the game on fire with Luton gifting us a goal. Then we we scored another goal really quickly, and we're two nil up like cruising. And their their their, sec- their first goal was a bit fortuitous. Like fair enough, you can say how does the ball get to Chong, but it deflects off uh, I think Varane or someone or Dallo maybe I can't remember. And you know it's just a lucky deflection and it's and it's a goal. Fair play that can happen. But from then the amounts of chances that we conceded to Luton and, and it looked like Luton were going to be the side to score next was bad. But then in the second half, let's not act like we didn't have all the chances. Kaminsky made some good saves and the other was just poor finishing from us. That game could have easily been 5-1 today. But then the problem is on top of that is though, the game could have easily been 2-2. The game could have been 2-2. From 2-1, it could have been 2-2 or it could have been 5-1. And that's that's where we're just not seeing it from us. I'm confused. I am. Because some of our senior players, what they're doing on the ball is criminal. How Bruno is playing the game right now is just criminal. It really, really is. You have, you can't not call it out for anything other than what we're seeing. It's just so poor. Now I'm going to get to the positives. Rasmus. Now there were some bits of, you know, uh, layoff plays, a little couple of balls that he tried to set that he conceded possession a few times. But there were other times when he was really, really physical. But listen, to get to give them a goal like that, rounds the keeper, super confident. And that second finish was absolutely outstanding. Instinctive, little chest, little Douglas Louise, little Douglas. That's what it was into the far corner. And he is on fire. Seven in the league now. He's doing absolutely amazingly well. Um, and he was and he was absolutely brilliant in those two moments to put us into a situation of being 2-0 up. And Kobe Mainu, King Kobe, Mamba mentality. He is unbelievable, Kobe Mainu. Now, yes, positionally there's still some there's still some way to go and physically in terms of sort of the recovery side of it. I think when there's a bit of space for him to to cover back, sometimes he might struggle in that. On the ball, he's the calmest coolest most collected head out there some of the touches he had were just a joke absolute joke Kobe Mainu really is a joke like nutmegging players calm on the ball when it's frantic he's the only technically sound midfielder we have it's not Casemiro it's not McTominay Ericsson's technically sound I get it but he's out the squad right now it's not Amrabat and it certainly isn't Bruno it's Kobe Mainu. He's just head and shoulders above, above these senior pros. And he is leading the way. Kobe Mainu, stand up. He is setting an example for all these players, man. Do you know what I mean? And he deserves massive praise for that. Huge praise for that. And um, I, he's just going from strength to strength. He's an absolute joy to watch. But the rest of them today, it is a let off because the amount of chances they missed and, the, and then how open the game was after we scored up until half time, after Luton scored the, the, the first goal. Back, sorry. When it, when it got to 2-1, from then to half time was absolutely abysmal. And then in the second half, yes, Luton, you know, had had moments, but we had all the chances. And that is a positive. Ten Hag can do no more. We are creating the chances. The flipping brain dead players during the, during the, during that time didn't finish their chances. However, it is a massive three points. We have cut that gap down to 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 three to, to three points behind Spurs. It was very important that we did win. And you know what? When you think about it, every team, you know, like the bigger teams that go to Kenilworth Road, don't come out easy. Don't come out easy. But what pisses me off about today is we could have made that a really easy game. Two nil up after bloody what ten minutes or some shit like that should have been an easy game. It wasn't. And then at two one with all them chances, we should have made it an easy game, and we didn't. That's what's annoying. 
But overall, yes, you are always going to get a hard game at Kenilworth Road. Man City struggled there. Spurs struggled there. Liverpool struggled there. Didn't win. And so did and so did Arsenal. Uh, they did win. So, so did Chelsea, sorry. And they did win, but it was a struggle. So on that take of it, fair play to Lou. I'm going to give props to them because they, when they was in the game at the right times, they made it difficult. And you have to give props to them for that. But I am not excusing what we looked like. We looked really, really bad. Honestly, we looked really, really bad at times today. And the lack of control during these games is just puzzling. And I, and, and honestly, I know it's easy to just, it's the manager and there's no tactics and stuff. But I think the tactics were clear. The players just didn't implement them. They just decided to go and do their own fucking thing at like 2-0. I don't get it. Like we needed half time to save us. It's all up here. It's all mentality. Honestly. But Manu, head and shoulders, man of the match, easy. Absolutely easy. But well done for winning. And that actually is four and four, which is the most important thing. Roll on Fulham. It's a big problem that Luke Shaw's out now. Big, big problem that is. Um, but, but we've got to find a way. And if we can make it five and five, that'll be massive. Anyway, smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. I'm out of here. Thank God for three points. Yeah. Thank God for three points. Come on. <laughs>